So I want to talk about scientific frauds and misconduct in the scientific effort. We've seen a lot of that this summer in terms of it's been a discussion topic. There's been moments where people have sort of questioned what is going on in the scientific community in terms of research. I want to kind of explain some of it and then hopefully give you some particularly those that are in the game that are doing academic research that um, you know just give you some tips I think it that will hopefully help you out with dealing with this so first of all what is going on with scientific fraud and all of this data misconduct well there is there's sort of two phenomenon I guess that's going on the first one is is that it is really hard to look at data and if you look at most data it seems like it would be very easy to sort of look at the stuff right so you're looking at now today the sort of norm is to look at millions of observations of data now 20 years ago you would have been looking at maybe a hundred observations of data now um, what we're being trained to do is use increasingly complicated statistical methods to look at these large amounts of data because data is freely available now, right? And this is a problem that, that I foresaw many years ago when people were sort of saying, hey, we need to sort of scrimp and save on data. No, 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 it's getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. This problem is getting worse and worse and worse. And we're getting more complicated data that we get access to. Now, the problem is, is making sense of what that actually is. And when you look at it, it often shows many different patterns. The world is extremely complicated. And yet it's, it's very simple in a lot of different ways, but it's complicated to sort of see these patterns. And so we have to use increasingly more complicated methods, um, you know, all these kind of sort of rigmarole things that we have to go through. And it's very, very difficult to sort of see something within the data, within the real world. Now, there is a second phenomenon that's going on. And this is more related to the incentive system of the academic research game. And that is, is that we are trained to look for things that are interesting. I'm sad to say, and I really don't like saying this, but the world is not necessarily all as interesting as we would hope it to be, in the sense that there's a lot of ordinariness, right? So we can't necessarily talk about something that is an ordinary life thing because we already know that stuff. We quote unquote, already know that stuff. But in my view, um, you know, much of this ordinary stuff we don't know. We assume that we know, but the outside world doesn't necessarily see that, right? So who's the outside world in this particular scenario? It's random other academic people. Now, who are these random other academic people? These are people that are really well-trained, very smart, and they're astute, and they are really wanting to help and, and, and do a lot of amazing things, but they, don't sort of see often um, because we're trained to look at sort of what is interesting in this world um, they don't often see that ordinariness that the mundane the boring it's actually pretty interesting right a lot of that stuff is pretty interesting and a lot of it has to do with word sleuthing so what do i mean by that that's where you actually are communicating to the outside world that this thing is actually interesting because sometimes most often people are really just not very good writers and that's a hard very difficult act or difficult thing to say right so we have this phenomenon that's going on we can't the, the world is a lot more complicated than we ever assume it is we got an access amounts of data and we also have these very strong incentives so the strong incentives is that we don't get a job we don't get paid we can't feed our families unless we find these interesting things right so the strong incentives are there to do something that is not necessarily great, right? In the sense that you might be, it's easy to get confused or to look at this data and see things that you don't necessarily should see. Now there's all sorts of things that have been proposed to mitigate this risk, right? And mitigate the sort of troubles that we face. But ultimately, um, all of those sort of proposed methods, right? So replicating this has been going on this so interesting enough right um, 
people have been sort of saying we should replicate work that's part of the scientific effort for many years but but because we have this constraint on it needs to be interesting nobody ever replicated work uh, until very recently until the last 10 15 years um, and then all of a sudden this was a major breakthrough when we started replicating work right like that tells you how kind of bizarro this sort of interesting constraint is but um, what we need to start suggesting right so all of this behavior is going to exist forever and it's existed for many years right like this is not anything that's new that's been going on not in the scientific effort right so science is relatively new that we know about it right so modern scientific engine it's really since the second world war right that things started to heat up but before that um people have been doing weird things forever Right? That's how science started, is in the heart of alchemy, right? That we actually, so science existed 2,000, 3,000 years ago in sort of the discovery of thinking about the world. It was more philosophical. Then it kind of disappeared for many, many years. And then during, basically just after the enlightenment, we started looking for, um, you know, we started looking for transforming uh, different things lead into gold and then we discovered some really interesting things and so this bled out into many different areas we started looking at things and we started discovering some really interesting things but at, at the heart of it we are trying to find things that are not necessarily that interesting so um in or, or interesting right so in the in the case of the sort of alchemy thing people just kind of from what i understand um, people just kind of gave up and they were like, wait a minute, this is, this is not going to work out. So, you know, what do we do, right? What, what, can, what can I actually do? What can you actually do to help out, right? I think the most profound thing that took me years and years and years to sort of rec um, reconcile in my head, and I'm still contemplating it, sort of two things, right? Nobody's coming to the rescue. You have to do it yourself. That's an important thing that I've learned and it's so hard to deal with. You always think that somebody is going to come rescue you or you think if you just have this person or, you know, that there's more people that are involved that's going to be very helpful. No, nobody's coming to the rescue. Nobody's going to help you out, right? So it's up to you to stand up and to do this. But then the other thing, I think it's deeply, deeply rooted in our... Um, insecurities as human beings to suggest I'm good enough right? I don't need to prove to the outside world that I need to do all of these kind of things now it's wonderful to get paid a lot of money it's wonderful to feed your family it's wonderful to do all those kind of things I mean it's really wonderful but ultimately you have to be able to stand up and say you know I'm okay with who I am and I can do this and I'm gonna take all sorts of flack by doing this particular thing that maybe is not gonna show anything, right? That it's it's gonna be a dead end or I'm gonna waste all sorts of resources to actually get there. It's gonna feel like a waste, right? Research and development is at the heart of it. You're wasting 90% of your resources to find something. So it'll be all this kind of waste right that we pursue these things and it doesn't seem like it's ever going to work out but you have to know that i'm okay with who i am um and even still right this is a sort of challenging thing even still you might be tempted to go into different directions um, because it's complicated the world is complicated and so you know that remember i came back to the beginning that that the world is absolutely really complicated. We have access to unbelievable amounts of data. We can process this ourselves. So what do we actually do with all of this data that's available? What do we, what do we say? So first of all, is just being open and honest with who you are, being open and honest with the, um, everything that you are possibly doing. And I know that sometimes it's tricky because showing everything is really tough. Right, take it from me, like being here. I would love to be more op open with my life, but you would not watch it, you would not care, right? So if I was to show you what my day-to-day -day is in the office, by the way, I can't do that because I have sort of constraints on what I can 
show um, because it's university property, right? So if, um, if I was to show you my day to day, you'd be really, really massively bored. So I try to give you snippets to, to walk forward, right? And, and all of that, that's kind of what life is, right? We're massively boring human beings doing massively boring things all the time. And then we have to sort of tell somebody why our life is actually interesting. And that's a hard problem to do, right? Most of us sort of struggle with that. And if we know deep down inside that we are just a good human being, we don't have to prove to anybody, and we just simply have to say, we don't have to have an elevator pitch. I think all of that stuff is garbage, right? That we're being sort of trained to think about. We just say, hey, this is me, and I'm gonna bumble through this. And I don't know what the heck I'm doing, but this is what I'm doing. If we have that attitude coming into it and we approach different people, we're going to be less likely to try to impress other people. And we're gonna be less likely to, to do things that are not necessarily um, in the scientific efforts sort of interest. Now, the other thing is, what do you do when you find people or you do, you find data um, that are doing these kind of things? right? And you're going into different directions. They're going into different directions. Um, frankly, I think you just stand, state your truth and that's it, right? This is, this is what it is. And it takes a lot of courage to often do that. A tremendous amount of courage. And I'd hate to be in that position. Um, but often you might be in that position, right? And you just have to state your truth. This is what I think is actually going on. Let's look into it. Now, do, do you call out somebody that they're doing fraudulent effort? No, you actually state what they're doing or it's um, the wording that I would use. Mm, this is, it kind of makes me uncomfortable. This, um, this is kind of a peculiar way of doing things, kind of wording like that. Um, because you're remembering that other people are human beings too, right? And when you're remembering that other people are human beings, you have to give them some possibility to have outlets um, to, to, to move through this gracefully in various different ways, right? And I think that's, that's an important thing to think about. It's hard to, for us to sort of process and think about because often we're sort of emotionally charged and this is like a big aha moment, but we have to think about, okay, how do we deal with this so um, everybody feels okay with themselves given what's actually gone on? And you just say, hey, this is unusual. I've never seen this way of doing things before. Can you explain what happened? Um, and that's it. I think having that kind of belief that you are good inside, and those people are probably really well-intentioned and they would love to do the best that they possibly can, but they're put into situations that I am very much a believer of this. If you look at, um, so for example, why people commit crimes, for example, it's often not that they're sort of heinous individuals. Sometimes, sometimes they are, right? Like they're just kind of various different reasons or not necessarily the people that you want to hang around with. But many people, it's just it's opportunistic, right? The vast majority of the people are kind of put into weird situations and they have to sort of navigate through that. Um, and often they make kind of just not great choices, right? So if we come into the thinking like, hey, I'm good inside. I don't need to prove to anybody. I am a decent human being. Um, and I am, I don't need to compete or do anything like that. If I just walk through this and I show everybody this kind of stuff and I might be the last person in the entire world that ever sort of discovers this because I'm going so slow and I'm wasting so much resources. But if I actually do this and I step forward, I'm okay with who I am. And I know that this is very much a kind of religious message, right? I'm, I'm, I'm very cognizant of this, um, but I think some of those religious me messages that have been around for a long time at the heart of it, they're demonstrating some very good principles that we should abide by in terms of how do we deal with tricky situations. So I want you to go ahead and realize this is never gonna disappear. The 
the world is complicated and there always are going to be incentives to do different things wherever there's money involved you just got to follow the money right but if you have that attitude that i'm okay and i'm just going to take things one step at a time i'm going to try to do things right every single time um, and i'm going to explain along the way why i actually did the thing that i did which sometimes is very tricky to do i realize that but um, i'm just going to try to be open and honest and a sincere human being as much as i can if i take that as a person going forward hopefully you'll navigate some of these difficult issues along the way all right take care and have a wonderful day